All right, folks, it's time for all of our favorite podcasts. Cut to the chase. Jeff Dillon, how are you doing today? Greg, thank you for having me. I'm good. You know, a lot of times I talk about the law or serious stuff. Not today. Not today. A few weeks ago, I, uh, you know, in the podcasting world, it's kind of like, you know, it's evolving as we breathe. So now, like, you have a podcast, now they, everybody's, you got to get on somebody else's podcast. I'm like, what? What talk? That's right. It's a whole ecosystem. Yeah. A given a give and take. Yeah, and I looked out. You know, I'm like, Jeff here interviewed me. Jeff is with Lawyer Interviews podcast. That's right. Jeff is also a lawyer. Correct. And a comedian. Guilty. That's right. Guilty. And I think the only thing I heard about that during our interview was that you had two. No, no. Yeah. Your mother and me. No. I didn't do that. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was being very humble and saying that only my parents watch my stuff, but uh, it's just, it's not true. I've, I have a, uh, at least 10 to 15 fans, Excellent. I would say. That's, you know what? If they're good fans, it's that's good. It's niche, micro, micro fans. Micro niche. Yeah, yeah, yes. Good. You know, I'm trying to get my audience kind of, you know, caught up with the way things are, are in the world. Ergo, your presence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully it works out. So, God, you know, a little back, I get on Jeff's show and he's like, what do you want to? You know, we're going to talk about you as a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, all right. I'll, you know, I give him a little background or whatever. And I said, how long? I mean, do you really want me to go at it? And, and you said, go at it. That's right. And then like 45 minutes later, I had not taken a breath. <laughs> and said a word. And yeah. his eyes rolled over and that was the end of the show. Yeah. No, I was able to get some work done and do some emails while you were going. So, <laughs> all right. Well, now it's your turn. All right. So we're going to talk about you and your, the podcast and your, you know, lawyer career. Your, I mean, I don't know how you can do it all, but where do you want to start? You want to start with the podcast? Uh, sure. I mean, the podcast thing is very new to me. I've been doing that for the last three months, let's say, and it's not even really my podcast i'm just like the speaker of it there's a guy who does he created this meme account which you know you're on instagram you you understand that there's like these you they're kind of like niche but not really they're these meme accounts that have hundreds of thousands of followers that talk about you know why it's the 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 grum you know the the day-to-day about being a lawyer or any kind, and they have them for everything. You know, it's like nurse memes, doctor memes, plumber memes, lawyer memes. So like literally the lawyer meme, one of many actually reached out to me, saw that I was a comedian who posted like law related content and said, I'm doing, uh, I started this interview program on YouTube and I'm interviewing lawyers. And he said, I think it'd be good to have a comedian do it. Uh, and you could be like Joe Rogan. Yeah. Uh, so big shoes to fill when yeah. he did that. He, I, I mean, he's an interesting dude. He's like his, all his memes are like about lawyers, like basically in America, it seems like. And he's from Bosnia, Herzegovina, which is why he doesn't do these himself. And he's yeah. just like an online, like I had to zoom with him to make sure he was real because yeah. I thought, I thought I was going to get like my social security wiped and like everything, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, but he was real and he reaches out and has me reach out too. And we meet different lawyers who do different types of things. So it's like, you know, you're bot, you, like with you and uh, we've interviewed a couple others of like people who own their own law firms. Yours, I didn't expect to go in the way that it went. It was way more interesting because <laughs> um, and then others, you know, other people, other lawyer comics. There's a lot of them uh, lawyers who are like in the fashion world as a side hobby. So kind of getting all different angles 
I guess proving that lawyers are a little more interesting than just being a lawyer. Okay, I got to slow this down because I'm 56 and I'm like mean. I'm like, I, what is it? How is that relevant to like what we did? Like how am I a meme? Am, am I is oh my man hair pattern or that's like, great. You could be a meme if we want to screenshot any of this or <laughs> screenshotting you right now and then posting am I a meme would probably be pretty funny. Uh <laughs> you're, 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 listen, go at it. Go at it. Take as many photos as you want, or whatever. Uh this morning. You know what it, you know what a meme is, right? Or yeah, no? Yeah. No, let's pretend I don't. Okay meme if you don't know on i mean to describe it to my i would describe it to my parents i guess which i'm not saying you're uh well maybe <laughs> uh it's it's kind of like a modern day like comic strip a comic book in a way you know you have a picture and words and it describes a scene but instead of it being like multiple It'll just be like one person's face with one caption of words and it'll encapsulate usually something that has to do with pop culture and then you can reuse it. So yeah. you'll have a picture of a, you know, a cat looking scared and then you do it about everything from politics to like my neighbor to, you know, your life, like it's used for everything. Yeah. And so, you know, especially during the pandemic, I mean, bef they've been memes have been around for like since like my space like if, even before then right like it's like nine 90s 2000s i think but uh and they were popular for a while but i think really people like me who like i had a life outside of the internet a lot but the pandemic really brought everyone on their phones and looking on making online content more than ever and i've been more and you know so anyway yeah so I, I want the show to be about you, but I just got to, you know, there's my opportunity to like actually get caught up to speak. Is it like trademarked? The word mean, does it stand for anything? Is it an acronym or is it, did, did somebody like claim ownership of? I don't like, think so. Acronym? That's like, that's like a Google thing right here. Cause I have no idea who's like, uh -huh. like, because I know it starts for some, it stands for something. I don't think it's trademarked. <laughs> it's universally used. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's meme. It's an idea, behavior, or style that spreads the means of uh, imitation from person to person within a culture. <laughs> so, yeah. like, it's a thing. I don't even know, like, what it stands for. Uh, I know you could study it at school. Some weirdos could do that. Yeah, like in college. So you could pay whatever, $15,000 and have, I mean, who's the perfect, I want to be, a, I'm going to be a lot, that my next, my next act, I'm going to be a, a professor of memes. Yeah, I don't think you're qualified. I think you'd have to be 40 years younger. <laughs> All right. So we got the meme, we got the, the GIF and the emoji, right? I mean, I just, after I have this conversation with you all, I just want to make sure I've, I've encapsulated. This is great. Product. Sure. Yeah. You know what a, you know what a gif is, right? Yeah. Like it's the video, stupid video, a little motion picture. Yeah. And then an emoji, come on, you know that. Yeah. That's yeah. your so hip. That, I mean, does that with those three things, theoretically, can you communicate the entirety of what you need to communicate? I guess so. But I'm not like that. I'm not a meme person. I wasn't in the meme thing. What I did during the pandemic is you know because i started doing stand-up uh comedy in 2019 so i had like a full year and you know uh, three months basically of going to open mics and trying comedy but then once everything shut down with the pandemic uh tiktok became really popular uh instagram videos and stuff so i was you know my new creative outlet was to make fun videos my wife and i would make them at home yeah. And we would, and, you know, because we're lawyers and this is what we do every day, we'd make a TikTok, which is kind of, you know, they're like little videos, almost like memes too, because there's like trends and you would repurpose those trends for your thing. So we would make them like about being a junior associate at a law firm and blah, blah, blah. And so then I would make them and share them. 
And then the meme pages who are churning out, you know, three or four memes, but they're anonymous, you know, they're like, oh, great. This is a video that would fit what my followers do. They'd share it and tag me. And we had a little like quid pro quo of like, I'm giving them content. They're sharing it for me to give me more followers. It was like a whole thing all the way to Bosnia where this guy found me and was like, hey, can you do my, I have this idea for a YouTube channel. Can you help me? That's awesome. I mean, you know, I think these days, like some people would like wake up Sunday morning, think how do I have any money in my bank account? I have a lot of money. I don't, I'm, I'm sad. I'm not. Now I think people are like going right to their Instagram account. You know, did I gain any, how many followers did I gain? Did I lose? And that's like the, the source. And I haven't really moved on to TikTok yet, but I mean, I'm definitely suffering from, you know, FOMO, YOLO, every, everything, you know? Yeah. I, I, you know, yes, yes. I, I'm diagnosed as they would say. Okay. So, all right, let's get back to lawyer interviews. <laughs> so you yeah. guys are doing memes to like help lawyers or let lawyers have a creative like laugh or outlet or like what's, why would yeah. a lawyer want to go to your page? Okay. So what? different pages, this guy, lawyer memes, which you should follow, uh, just will post little joke pictures uh, about, you know, when the partner tells you to send a red line and uh, and then like it's yeah. this whole thing. And then everyone will be like, oh, that was me. Ha ha. And they'll share it. Uh, my page, which I just changed my Insta handle to be more anonymous. <laughs> um, I call myself attorney at lol with like, you know, instead of LOL. So okay. Uh, and I will post clips of my standup. I'll post clips of my TikTok videos that I make or screenshots of Twitter things. You know, I just, just like all my little comedic stuff or I'll announce what my next shows are. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's generally lawyer based, but then I kind of just do whatever. Yeah. So. All right. So you did a year exclusive, pre, you know, pre Instagram, TikTok and all that. You did a year stand up yep and how'd that go uh it, it was like it was awesome i wish i had done it earlier <laughs> um you know my journey there like you know i went straight from college to law school i graduated law school in 2017 started working at a big law firm in new york city doing like corporate securities work uh Kind of, you know, in one way it was cool. Like I'm paying off my loans. I'm living in New York City. Definitely felt like something missing from my, you know, what I wanted to do yeah. with myself. Like I didn't, you know, I couldn't could crack jokes at the office, I guess. It's just my personality. Friends have always told me, hey, you should try it. I had two friends come from college, moved to New York City. And they were like, hey, Jeff, we're going to try doing stand up. Yeah. And I said... And they're just like not as funny as me. They're just not. And so I was saying to myself, if these guys do it and I don't, I'm going to kill myself. Like (laughs) I can't. So it was that kind of like competitive whatever in me that I'm like, all right, we'll all go do it together. We go try one open mic and comics will tell you when you do your first one, you suck. Like even if you're funny, it takes so much time to get like any kind of but stage presence, confidence, like the, 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 the way to, to be able to tell a joke in a like concise way that can get a laugh. Um, so I think out of like five minutes, I had like one minute that people were laughing at me. Okay. Even just a little bit. Yeah. And that kind of, I addi- got addicted right away from that. And then, you know, next time you go, Oh, I tweaked that. I'll get rid of that thing. And it's like such a process. I had no idea. So <laughs> it's like very, and people are very serious about it. I, I do it as a hobby, but even as a hobby, if you don't do it at least once a week or more, yeah. it's, it's like being like, it's like working out or uh, playing basketball or something like you're just yeah. not going to get good at it. So, and you could do it if you wanted to like four times a night in New York city. It's the, it's the Mecca of, of comedy. So anybody can walk up sign up and just go and you know even if they're awful oh yeah 
and even if they're great, they're trying new stuff and it yeah. sucks. And that's how you find out. So it's like a whole, I always tell people like, if you want to try it, go because the bar is pretty low at an open mic. Even the best people are, you know, are trying new stuff and they, they expect it to be bad in a way, yeah. you know? And half of the crowd is not really listening anyway. But yeah. It's more. I mean, it's like 95% comedians. Um, <laughs> So are and they like, so loud you can't the, the audience can't and you're like could you could, could you keep it quiet back down there? Yeah. <laughs> if I would say like if I get a comedian to like look up from their phone or like smile, then yeah. I'm like, okay, in front of a real crowd, that would be like a big guffaw. <laughs> you yeah. know, like that's that's literally how that goes. So are you done with stand-up? I mean now so now you transition sort of into what is it, digital comedy? Well, no, actually, I never really stopped. So I did, you know, during the pandemic, people would do it on Zoom like this with people like a million people watching. And I tried that a couple of times. It's not great. Uh, people would do it in parks outdoors to get around the things. And then when things reopened in like 2021, I basically got right back into it. Nice. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely like my number one, like what I would describe myself as is like a I would try to say I'm a stand up comic. That's like my in Your terms top. of that's, the that's my favorite thing to do. That's what I would want to do more than anything. And uh, you, you get nervous as, as hell every single time. Honestly, like only up until the first laugh, as soon as I hear one laugh in the beginning, it melts away and it feels very natural. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm always uh, that's like always been like my nervous go-to habit in any uncomfortable circumstances to kind of like make jokes or make people laugh like at, you know, yeah. whatever. So it's kind of like a, maybe it's a defense mechanism. I don't know. But like, I don't, I feel like I've rarely, I mean, I've bombed, I've bombed horribly, but rarely will I let it be so bad that I, it just like, you know, I'll at least make fun of the fact that I'm bombing yeah, and then yeah. people will start laughing. Like, yeah it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing, but no, I don't get, I really don't get that nervous. Cause I'm so, you're so prepped. It's like going to trial, you know, you've gone over, not that I've ever gone to trial. <laughs> um, but I, I would imagine, you know, you don't go in there ad libbing, you know, you've done it a million times or you've yeah. worked, you know, you've memorized it. And in our case, you've practiced it a whole bunch of times. So do you have like endless stories? Are you constantly every day something, you know, happens just some ordinary thing and you're like, you see something so ridiculous that you can, you know, like constant and, and it's almost like you're entertaining yourself. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, most of my material comes from like when I'm talking with friends or my wife and we're just like, going back and forth just taught my wife's a lawyer also so we're just like we're always talking about work or, or yeah. joking about stuff and things that happen and then like i'll just like say something and people laugh at it and then i'll be like oh wait that's that was pretty good and then i'll write it down yeah. and keep it but i can't just like sit there and like oh let me write out this whole yeah. thing so you know um, most of my jokes are, my jokes are either about law about my family my marriage yeah. Um, and then, you know, a couple other little things that can, that can come up, but it's mostly about myself. Yeah. Which I think is pretty standard. Yeah. I think it's a lot easier and better when yeah. people talk about themselves than like, you know, only like Jerry Seinfeld is like the exemption of like someone who just like talks about you know, oh, cereal or the movies, you know, like <laughs> that, it's, that doesn't Talking about nothing. Exactly. Yeah. That's not my, I mean, he's, he's, thing. he's unbelievable. Yeah. So, all right, so now, I mean, does your wife laugh at your jokes generally? Too much. She's Too the, much. it's her fault that I do this. It yeah. really is. All right. Cause like she has the best sense of humor. She laughs at everything. And yeah. when she'll come to an open mic with me or a show or something like what she doesn't all the time, because she would anyone you'd be insane to do that <laughs> it gets yeah. really bad but she'll be like she, you know she'll be audibly laughing 
to everyone like she just loved so i got so much false confidence from her yeah. and uh but she she loves you know going to it she loves comedy and usually has a lot of good ideas too but she's too afraid to do it herself yeah 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 well listen they you need writers you know yes yes maybe you'll make a team like you know lucy and uh, desi or whatever so did yeah. your two friends how did they do how did they fare are they they didn't they cut it. no <laughs> they may they went a couple more times one tried for like another three months and then petered out and i just like got so addicted into it and they are like to them it was like a fad like all right we're done yeah but i was did. like they did. yeah they, they did it. it they bucket list but I, to me it was like i couldn't stop <laughs> yeah all right so let's move on now to your instagram tiktok so I guess this is a whole new world for comedians, podcasts, right? Yes. You, know, you don't need the stage. I know you're it, still on stage. And oh, by, before we even move on to that, I, do you have anything uh, scheduled? Where do you perform? Are you New York City? Are you yeah? So I'm I'm in New York City. I live in Harlem, and I have a a, a co-producer, and the two of us we put on a weekly show on thursdays at a bar called jack diamonds which is in uh gramercy and uh in new york city so we do that every every thursday um, i'm writing this down because i am gonna go see it but oh hell yeah that'd be awesome we get like other comics some who have been you know at work at the comedy cellar or on comedy central to like to you know we give them the stage time and we promote it and then host i'm i love hosting i'm like the i love picking on people in the crowd and like introducing the next person it's one of my i, I didn't even realize how much i liked doing that i almost yeah. like it more than the writing material i know well then that, that gives you a lot of leeway because you don't really have to have too much scripted and prepared and you can just kind of roll with it exactly maybe you're even just naturally funny you know i have friends that tell I couldn't tell a joke if my life <laughs> I can't remember I can't remember people's names jokes whatever but you know I can make people laugh you know I don't so I'm you know one of my buddies he can't make people laugh but he's he tells a hell of a, of a joke I don't know gotcha but yeah I, no it's two different things two different right. things yeah. so I actually was in the meatpacking district last Thursday of all oh days. really right so Gramercy that's is that like West Village kind of thing? It's like Kipps Bay. It's 27th and Lexington. Um, it's like, I don't know, there's a million names for every neighborhood and I always get it wrong, but like it's between Kipps Bay, Gramercy, uh, sort of on the east side, lower east, not lower east or east village. It's a, it's more it's right below Flatiron. Does any okay. of this make sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then so in addition to that, I'll be on other people's shows or some comedy clubs I've gotten to to perform at, you know, whenever I'm I get the chance. It's hard. It's very it's competitive. Yeah. And I guess you got to get on a roll, right? You got to be like trendy. Exactly. Well, just like this podcast, just like how you got me on yours and then now I did and I had you on mine. That is like to a fault it's kind of annoying in the new york comedy scene of like amateur people basically they're trading like oh jeff put me on your show i'll put you on mine even if you're funny or not yeah. so <laughs> yeah it's you know not like everything is you know nep nepotism or fucked up i don't know not nepotism but <laughs> you know what i mean it is it is i mean one, one of my best friends growing up he actually had i thought a pretty accurate he was telling me a, a sad story about one of his colleagues who died and he had been he had grown very close to the the guy over over decades, and they did a lot of work together and serious work, and you know they really got. But he said at the end, he said I was so tight with the guy, and he was crying and all this. And um, but he said he he was a transactional friend, unlike me. <laughs> and we grew up together, you know, we were friends because we were friends, you know, not because we were doing the same thing or yeah, I'm gonna get you on my show, you're on my show, whatever, you know. Yeah, but I guess that's, you know, there's probably going to be some psychological issues that evolve from this whole con this whole social construct. Right. I, I like what? What would be the issue? I guess maybe just like, you know, hyper me, me, me. You know, everything is, you know, you're like, OK, I'll yeah, I'm going to be nice to you, but 
you know, you got to be nice to me. Yeah. So there's no, like, you lose a little bit of the genuineness of your conduct. Is yep. everything a transaction? I don't know. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm sure it's the same in, in, you know, I know it's similar in, in business and in law and, you know, amongst people give, referring clients to each other or I would guess. I don't know. There's that as well. All right. So let's move on. So you got your Instagram, your TikTok, your Instagram page. Tell me the name of it again. It's attorney at law LZ, like lols. So attorney at lols. <laughs> at lols. L A W. LZ. LZ. Yeah. So that's, I, I'm, I'm, am I on the wrong, your wrong Instagram page now? Uh, no, you're following me. I just yeah. changed it in an auto. Yeah. You'll just see that now, but for people going forward, it's, you know, attorney at spelled at A T L A W L Z. All right. But you're not doing the memes on your, or are you doing memes on your page? No, I'll do like videos. I'll do uh, clips of my stand up. Yeah. Um, and I'll promote shows. Yeah. And has, so does your Instagram page differ from your TikTok or are they kind of? Well, yeah, different apps, but I have the same name yeah. in both places uh, on time. TikTok. Yep. Same, same thing. I'll post it on both spots. Yep. Yeah. So like, I guess my, my next, I'm um, over 50 year old question is why have both? Like if these two things exist, like what's, you know, what's the point of having the, two things that are essentially doing the same thing. They are, but they reach different audiences. I mean, it's the world of online digital comedy is pretty interesting because it's like, it's like the great equalizer in a way. I know people who would be like at open mics with me and then they posted some of their clips. And because of the algorithms on either YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram, they'd gain like hundreds of thousands of followers. And all of a sudden they're like an elevated status yeah. uh, that maybe would have taken forever going through just like word of mouth or gatekeepers at clubs and yeah. stuff like that. So you kind of, it's like this grassroots thing where like all of a sudden uh, people are noticing you for doing, you know, and so people are, uh, it's a way to reach audiences. It's awesome in a way. It can be frustrating too because yeah. you, you'll put out a dud and then you put all this work into it. Uh, but Instagram and TikTok, they like sp they spewed it out to different people based on like just randomness. I don't know how that stuff really works. Yeah. But if on TikTok, I think they like show like a hundred random people your video, and if fifty of them either like it or share it or comment or uh, watch it two or three more times, then they'll show it to 500 people. And then if they all respond, then they'll show it to a thousand and like so on and so on until it either goes viral or they drop it. So that's like, you got, you know, you people, I don't have YouTube um, and I'm not really big on Twitter, but like people are on everything just to try and find something to, to get out there. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, it's become a very like wholesome approach. You're no, it's very few people I know of who are just like, yeah, I'm a comedian and unless they're older, <laughs> um, that are just like, they don't have some kind of social media presence yeah, or are trying to at least. Yeah. And I, and I have friends that don't, and it's always the same sad story, you know, why they don't have it, why they're not on it, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, eventually some, somebody had a birthday party and they didn't know about it because they weren't on, you know, and I'm like, look, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not here to fill the void for you and tell you, <laughs> you know, somebody died or, you yeah. know, they yeah. you or whatever it is, you know, that's, you know, Hey, listen, everybody's got their own uh, free will. So uh, yeah, it's the way it is. All right. So, I mean, do you think that the digital, the Instagram, the TikTok? is going to just like take over the world for, of comedians. I mean, is that like, it are just going to just go, I want comedy and go to Instagram because it's yeah. me, it like a, an ideal world. It's not even a bold statement. It already has. <laughs> it's like yeah. way already has uh, <laughs> where this is like a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, if we did this podcast 10 years ago, maybe yeah. this would have been like some cutting edge stuff, but you know, just like, are you a meme or whatever? <laughs> but yeah. like, 
It's <laughs> we're way. I'm let sorry. me tell you. I'm sorry. I'll start. No, it's, I do love talking about this stuff though, because it is interesting. Um, you know, like, I don't know if you're, if you watch comedy specials like on Netflix yeah, and before then on comedy central. Yeah. So that's like an hour or a half hour of your time that, you know, some people will sit through it and watch it. If you really love the person. Yeah. I, I don't really, uh, and people I know don't always have the patience for that, yeah. but what these comedians will do even the ones that are older and like really established, someone else does it for them. They'll cut up their stuff into little chunks so that you can find it all over. And be, and then if you're like, wow, I really like this, I'll go YouTube or Netflix, the full thing. But it's like, everything is now just the tiniest thing. That's why I also, you know, people's mind attention spans are so tiny and TikTok people can be so funny in like three seconds or six seconds. And then you can just get to the next one, get to the next one. And it's like, it's hard to just sit through. A, I mean, I made a video today that's one minute long and I know it doesn't have a chance because yes. it's just too long. Yeah. Well, I, 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 you know, I'm like taking these courses or whatever to try to figure out what to do with my, you know, I'm trying on YouTube, trying on Instagram, you know, it's like 1.8 seconds. That's it. If your thumbnail doesn't get them in 1.8, you're done. So like you a said, podcast podcast people are listening to they're listening to it on their way to work or in yeah. transit they can't no one wants to sit in silence anymore yeah, exactly yeah so they'll listen to you know people blobbing around for three hours <laughs> you yeah. know on a flight but you know somehow so that the long thing is fine that's well, going back yeah. yeah 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 no like you're working out and all that kind of stuff or whatever, you know, you're on the bicycle for 30 minutes or whatever. Why not? You know, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to, this, this episode is going to be more like for a flight, a cross country flight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we're over the 30 minutes, but all right, let's move on to your law. I okay. Mean, it sounds like if you're like, you were hired and out of law school and you're in New York city working, it sounds like you, you may, could I, should I be bold and say that you're actually bright? <laughs> yeah you can say that it's yeah, i'm not bad uh <laughs> i i'm a you know above average i'd say yeah. above average yeah well listen that could be uh, real high or that could be <laughs> right at that you know yeah i mean i i went to uh you know a, a t14 law school very competitive group the 14th one georgetown but you know still uh you know, you, you know, I felt really excited. I got off a wait list and was like, so excited. I felt like, you know, being in DC, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to change the world with my legal education. <laughs> you know, they may, they make you feel so like special, you know, cause they have like, you know, Supreme court justices coming in and giving talks and stuff. And, but I got humbled real fast by all the other, you know, geniuses around me. <laughs> um, and then, Something about like just not, you know, the people who were really excelled at law school. And I was like a middling student, like, you know, just B plus average, basically. Um, they were the ones who were like, I'm going to be in litigation. I'm going to be, you know, appellate. And I was like, you know, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm the best at this. Like, there's got to be something else. And so I was part of the group of people who were like, well, I'll try corporate law because i want to just do the other thing something yeah. else uh so you know i actually i actually like what i do i do like you know it's it's securities law and um i'm trying to be a little vague i don't think anyone's gonna find me or find this yeah. but i do like for private i'm a private funds lawyer so i'm dealing with like securities laws uh investment company act advisors act um and so there's a little bit of like regulatory stuff and then also drafting and transactional things. And I've been at it for like five years now. So I kind of know it and we'll, you know, can hold my, I can answer basic questions to clients and lead yeah. some things, but I'm still like under the yoke of a partner in almost everything. Um, and holding, yeah. you back. holding you back. I'm, I'm uh, no. <laughs> okay. That was my time. Sometimes I'm yeah. holding. Uh, yeah. 
when I'm trying to explain to them what a meme is, yes, but that would be yeah. If you listen, you you know, they could show them some of your TikTok videos or whatever, and sort of educate them. You know, but yeah. Listen, the thing is, what you so you're a good storyteller, and the best trialers are not the best, but it's a main ingredient is you got to be able to tell a story. So you go into a corporate trial. I mean, I know you're doing transactional work, but you know the corporate trials or whatever to to keep a jury interested. It actually is a true talent, you know, and to be able to explain a, you know, some kind of, you know, complicated transaction in a way that they can understand it and they li listen to you, whatever is, is, you know, maybe you got something there, the combination down the road. Maybe. Yeah. No, I, I've always played around with that idea. Um, didn't have the, you know, it was like a, I almost feel like I hid by being like, you know, tried to hide by being a corporate person, just writing, yeah. Uh, so that I didn't have to do that. Um, but then honestly, through comedy and stand up and stuff, I think I kind of like scratched that itch of like public speaking yeah. and creativeness that I actually have a lot of balance and happiness in my like what I do, you know, like I'll go to stand I'll do like my opening joke at almost all of my shows is like, you know, I'm a corporate lawyer, so I don't really need this. And then when I go back to work, I'm like, well, I'm a comic, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't need this. <laughs> oh, no. Don't say that. Don't say that. No, only in my head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, build up to that. You got to build up to that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But I have, I have both kind of, you know, when one goes great or one doesn't go great, I could feel better about the other. It's great. It's just two separate worlds, really. Yeah. Look, well, if you're in your law office and you're like, well, hey, I don't care about, you know, fuck off, whatever. I'm the comedian. Then if they get if they take you literally, then you can say, hey, I was just, you know, I was just working on that. You know, that's a bit. Yeah. That, sorry. That's a workshop. That's a bit, yeah. So yeah. I had my I, had, I actually had a hearing today and, you know, now everything's on Zoom. And my secretary was supposed to get me what we call a special set. Fifteen minutes. Just me and the opposition. They were they were in deep doo doo. OK. But they were just being difficult to whatever the whole time. They had no excuse whatsoever. And, you know, so, of course, my secretary but doesn't speak that good English or whatever. That's a whole other story. That's a whole other episode. But she's great, you know. But she said she gets me one of these hearings with 20 other cases, okay. So, and, of course, my case is the oldest case, and I'm the oldest. I should go first or whatever. So the judge, I can see, you know, passed me by or whatever. And now I'm thinking i got to sit and listen to 20 other the most boring stuff, okay? So at some point, I didn't realize that my mute was off. Oh, so my secretary comes in at 11 o'clock, okay? Because she's working remotely and all this and whatever. And she said, I, I should be happy she came in at 11. So I, I, I screamed out to her, like, Miriam, I, I cannot believe that I'm not actually on this, <laughs> this, this calendar. Like, what's going on? So the judge hears the whole thing. Whatever. And? And, you know, so she said, Mr. Goldfarb, put me on mute. That story <laughs> that kind of fizzled out. But I got everything I wanted. The other side had no excuse or whatever. And she's like, you're out. You guys are out. Like, judge, bye. So that's Copy. it. That's what, like, litig that's what litigating is, you know, is just no notes, no preparation. Just judge, they're wrong, I'm right. Okay. All right. And it works. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the other strategy is don't say anything. Uh -huh. let the other attorney you know like hang themselves gotcha gotcha those are, those are my two, two lawyer tips for, for you <laughs> so is there anything that you haven't talked about today right now that you would like to you know i mean your comedy your your family i mean you know your wife yeah yeah no what i mean what I else? my wife and out? i we have a nice little story we met in uh we met in law school on the very first day oh, uh nice at orientation um we went on there was like some kind of like hike around the woods that they had everyone go to and uh we were like friends and then like every single person started like trying to hit on her and nice. get with her and i just again my competitiveness kicked in yeah. and i'm like that's it no everyone back off like she is just mine but we <laughs> really <laughs> uh and i mean we were together you know inseparable since really but uh we come from very different backgrounds she's uh from a tiny town called battle mountain nevada and that has like a population of like two thousand people and it's like a gold mining town and she went to college in idaho yeah. and i'm a new york 
to South Florida Jew, like totally, you know, I'm the first Jewish person she ever met. Yeah. Uh, her parents, you know, they didn't ask where my horns were, but they might as well have, yeah. you know, they yeah. could have, like, they were that, uh, you know, su- I mean, welcoming and loving with all yeah. this stuff, but you couldn't, you couldn't even make up how different our parents are and yeah. like from pol- politics to everything. So, uh, it definitely makes for good, uh, makes for good comedic content and I can imagine. And, you know, maybe we'll like, we'll bridge the world's, the, the, the country's divide together. Hopefully. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you will, but no, I, I gotta believe that that is to a fertile ground for uh, material for your show. Oh, it absolutely is. I, yeah. So you've been to Idaho now, right? Oh yeah. More than I ever would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, or like, have you gone beyond yeah beyond too like boise yeah. and then uh the outskirts of it really yeah. uh yeah not it so, boise is actually really cool the other places uh you're scared you're running scared uh, yeah you're not i guess doing stand up. you're not doing stand up outside of boise that to a bunch to a bunch of cows maybe but like you know <laughs> there's there's you know there's not much there's just not much i did do stand up once in boise though yeah how would that go uh, i was they they were it was great i was like the new york celebrity you know nice. like, yeah you yeah. definitely stood, stood out there yeah, yeah. so what so who give me your favorite big name comedian your favorite rising star Ugh, I hate this question because it's so much pressure on like who, you know, who I am or anything like that. But uh, I'll say who I just watched. Let me think. Uh, I really liked, uh, I just saw Bill Burr's special. I really like him. Uh, I really like, I, uh, maybe less known but in the comedy world this guy mark normand who has like really good uh like quick punch lines um i'm trying to think i saw i love going to shows and probably one of the coolest nights going to the comedy cellar oh um i've seen jim gaffigan drop in to a show he's really good i saw aziz Ansari. he was awesome uh Man, I just love so many comedians and I don't really have a favorite, but these are like what's coming to mind of like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with those names. Stick with those. Names. All right. So I think it was like three years ago, I went to some big lawyer conference, spent a lot of money, had no idea why, what, what to expect. And they actually had um, a, a big name keynote speaker, speaker, Bob Woodward, the guy that did uh, the, with the uh, Nixon Watergate, the journalist that wrote that story. And then they had a comedian, Sebastian Maniscalco. Oh, he's and good. I had never heard him at all. Uh, never heard about him. Yeah. So he was hysterical. And, you know, going going back to the, you know, the wives, from, the husband wife from different backgrounds or whatever, he's Italian, you know, blue collar Italian. And then the wife is like Long Island Jew, whatever, or Queens Jew, whatever. And I mean, the you know, like the, his routine about like, you know, the Passover or whatever. It's just the food. The food. Yeah. I saw that. Yes. He's like the he's like, let us handle it. It's so funny. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I actually had a headache. I laughed so hard. At the end <laughs> yeah. of that show. It's a yeah. great bit. No, yeah. He's like the Jews, like they their cuisine falls apart after breakfast. It's like the bagels are good and then it's like it's just <laughs> <laughs> once they hit the blintzes, it's all downhill. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't understand a blintz if my life depended on it. Yeah. But I guess it's a th- like liver. Yeah. So you oh. went to stay with liver. My God. Up and coming though, I just thought of this person who really made it big from just from like what we're talking about. Um, if you look up this woman named Zarna, she I think she was a lawyer at one point. She has like millions of followers everywhere, and um, she uh, she's Indian and just like blew up on the scene. Really funny, makes so many funny videos, and uh, that is like probably soon she I, she if she's not already on tv she might be soon um i'm you know plugging her for any reason i don't know why but that's if you if you look her up it just i think it's just like z-a-r-n-a it's okay. like I, I will i will different so, perspective of anything i've you know but she's she's very 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 funny so i'll leave this 
last little tidbit for you to digest and maybe, you know, take it and run with it. My getting him in a text group, you know, with my buddies and uh, we're talking football. And one of them was, you know, I go to the Dolphin games. I've been going to the Dolphin games 46 years. My father, 51 season ticket holders. Just, you know, I mean, talk about misery. You know, I mean, we've had 30 really bad years now, maybe who knows or whatever. Anyway, so he asked me what one of the guys on the he's thinking about going next year. And he asked me what the price of the tickets are in the box seats. Yeah. So he's not Jewish or whatever. And I said, listen, that's, you know, I, I just can't go to a football. Like, I want to go to a football game and be like a football guy, not the guy in the club, uh, the box seats, not paying attention, you know, drinking again, fucked up or whatever. No, I'm there fucking, you know, football, football, football. Yeah. So I try to explain to him what, you know, what like one word to describe my thinking about like the economics of a football game and all that and my self description was not blue collar i'm not blue collar i'm jew collar oh okay can we play love- that or am i gonna have to excise that from this i uh, i mean i love the play on words jew collar could be a thing <laughs> I right. like that. Yeah. Right. If you use it, I want a little, you know, problem. I will yeah, I'll shout you out. I'll say that's from Mass Tort Guy. And <laughs> and you know, <laughs> help go to get it, you know, re- retain him too. Retain for, him, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He'll help you out. He'll help you, you call out. It, yeah, no, yeah. Look, it's funny. Big lead up, but it's a good line. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I gotta run because my girlfriend's giving me the old, you know, he's been talking too much. Jeff Dillon, comedian, podcast hoster, lawyer. Okay, I'm going to put all of his info in the show notes so you can find him that way, all right? Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Next time you're in New York, come see the show. Thursday night for sure, all right? All right, take care. All right, goodbye. Bye. That'll do it for this episode of Cut to the Chase. I think it's episode 98 or 99. You know what to do, subscribe, rate, review comment you could tell me hey you know enough of the comedy or i like the comedy whatever you want all right it's there for the tape so everybody enjoy your evening